Okay, so in this example we have a little piston rod system here and we're told that the piston rod of the hydraulic cylinder imparts a speed uh, to pin A, which is oriented upward, and based on that information when the angle theta is equal to 45 degrees, we're asked to use the method of instant centers to determine the angular velocity of link OB. Okay, so the way we're going to do this is we're going to try to use the information we're given uh, for good effect, and so here, let me draw back up onto our picture. We know in this case that the velocity of point A is moving upward, and so if I want to analyze this mechanism, I want to know something else about the other points on this body. So in this case, what I'm going to ask you to realize is that uh, when in this case the angle theta is equal to 45 degrees, we can have some other angle here, phi, which we can determine based on the fact that they share a common line here, and you can think of this as two triangles. And we could find this distance, which I'm going to choose to call little b, by noting that b times the, excuse me, noting that 0.4 times the sine of the angle phi is going to equal b, but b will also equal 0.25 times, in this case, the sine of the angle theta. And so if we want to find that value b, we can certainly find it, or we can simply find the relationship for phi by noting that phi is going to be the inverse sine of essentially 0.25 divided by 0.4 times the sine of the angle theta. Now you might say, well, how is that going to help us out? Well, in this case, what we can realize is that because O is a fixed point, that the velocity of point B is going to lie somewhere along the following line. Let me do a little sketch here. It's going to be somewhere along the line perpendicular to BO, which may or may not be aligned with AB. Now that I have that, and I know the velocity of point A, I can start to draw in perpendicular lines. And so if I do that, and I'll do so in red, I'll do some construction lines. So I'm going to draw a line perpendicular to the velocity of A. So I get a horizontal line like so. And I'll draw a line perpendicular uh, to the velocity of point B, which of course is just the continuation of line OB. And I'll find that the instant center of bar AB is over here. And now that I have that, I can start to work out uh, some math here to help me out. In particular, how am I going to do that? Well, what I can say is, is I know some angles here. Namely, I know that the angle inside the triangle, and perhaps I can blow this up, this angle right here is going to be the angle phi. And I also know essentially this height on this side, and so I can work out the math for everything else. And so let me, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to blow things up here to maybe help us out a bit. And so let me reconstruct this off to the side. So I'm going to have a triangle a line here, which is, here's point A, and here is point B. And I've just shown that the instant center is somewhere over here. And I'll call this instant center of AB. I will go ahead and sketch this in like so. And I furthermore have said that I know that this angle right here is the angle phi, and that this angle, pardon me, right here is the angle theta. Now, of course, that tells me that this angle right here is also the angle theta. And I know that this length right here is of length 0.25 meters. Now, what can I do with this is information? Well, what I need to do is if I want to find the angular velocity or angular speed even, of AB, I know that's going to equal VA, a known number, divided by the distance between A and the instant center of AB. If I want to work that out, I need to find that distance here on, on my chart. And so what I can do is I can say that I know from math that uh, the distance between A and this point right here is going to equal, in this case, 0.25 times the sine of the angle theta. And now I need to try to figure out the distance on the other side. Well, how could I do that? Well, I can realize that the vertical here, which I will draw in in green, is going to be 0.25 times the cosine of the angle theta. So if I know that piece of information, I have the adjacent side, I need the opposite side, I can say that the tangent of the angle phi is equal to the opposite side, this little distance right here, which I'll call maybe d, divided by the adjacent side, which I said is 0.25 times the cosine of the angle theta. So I can use this to find d, 
and then I can say then that omega AB is equal to VA divided by 0.25 times the sine of the angle theta plus D. I've now found a scalar value for omega AB and of course I can do a vector analysis here and simply point out that the vector omega AB, the angular velocity of that, will be the scalar component omega AB and in this case this is going to be a clockwise rotation so I'll have it in the minus k direction. Now why is this useful? Well I can use this and actually determine the speed of point B as well. Namely I know the speed of point B has to be equal to omega AB times the distance between B and the instant center of AB. That is this edge length right here. Well this edge length we can find, let's call this length E, we can say then this is equal to omega AB times E, where E is going to equal the square root of a right triangle whose length sides are given by D squared, plus in this case 0.25 times the cosine of the angle theta squared. So I can work that out and find VB. Once I have the velocity of point B, or more accurately its speed worked out, I can find omega of blink OB by simply noting that omega OB is going to equal VB divided by the distance between point B and point O, which is a known quantity, namely 0.4 meters. And so once I have that, I can have the scalar version of omega OB, and I can work out then the vector omega AB, the angular velocity of that link, is going to be, in this case, let me just double check my math, it is 0.4, VB divided by 0.4, and in this case, that's going to be moving in, well, we know, sorry to keep adding layers on my light drawings here, but we know that omega AB is rotating like such, which means that VB will be up like such, which means that if I'm rotating about point O, I know this will be in the positive K direction. It's a lot of math, a lot of trig, and a lot of geometry, but if you stick with me, you'll be good to go. Best of luck as you plug in the numbers here and wrap this thing up.